What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? I hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday, April 3rd. This is your hostess with the mostest, the Mr. Brentist. I'm the Brentist Brent you'll ever meet. Um, we're here tonight with, as always, our Masas the Fasas Casas. We got a couple guys that are joining us, special guest stars. So let's not, that's why I did Let's get you guys with those beers cracked open. Remember, there is a three drink minimum when you're with us with the podcast, and we hope you're enjoying yourself. Um, let's bring them all in. Let's see how things are going over here. They've been sitting there waiting for me. And Basas the Masas Casas, man, say what's up. What's up? How are we doing today? Hope everybody washed their hands and is ready to go. I hope everybody's alive from the massive earthquake we just had 10 minutes ago. All 4.3. Um, with us today, we got uh, Errol and Gil. Uh, Gil, go ahead and introduce yourself first. Sure. What's up, guys? Uh, Brent's my cousin. Followed in his footsteps. He's a Marine. And uh, one of the reasons that I chose to go down the route to go into the military, better half of a decade in the army and now i'm working with the world's largest manufacturing company for plastic pipe as a chief engineer so i'm here to give a little bit of the analytic side and uh maybe crunch a little bit of numbers right on right on well thank you for being here errol mr errol what's up bud it's hey, good to see you man it's always a good pleasure yeah 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 never a chore introduce yourself mr errol um my name is errol wilmot of course i i do um work with brent so we work at the uh, the blue guys, um, ex military as well. I did uh, my time. I came home. I'm a family man now, and uh, I'm thank you guys for letting me on today. We've been trying to get Errol on for the last five episodes, <laughs> and it's always like, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. And I keep telling Artie, Artie, man, Errol's gonna be on here. He's fucking hilarious, dude. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah all right, cool. Hey, man, you know what? Uh, Errol said he couldn't make it today. <laughs> I told Errol. <laughs> I told Errol at work the other day, I'm like, bro, if you fucking flake on me again, I'm not inviting you in, onto the fucking show anymore, bro. It's, it's, it's fucking, it's done. So I'm glad everybody was able to make it. Um, Appreciate being there, man. Yep. Yeah. Um, so once again, guys, don't forget cheers for the first drink officially on the stream. Oh, Salute. Salute. There we go. Let's fucking Salute. rock and roll. All right, so. I think it was last week or two weeks ago, already mentioned um, juice balls. And I'm not talking about the ones in his pants. Mm-hmm. Um, he mentioned that, yeah, you know, home runs have been on a rise, and but he feels the balls are a little juiced. Um, and that's where Gil came in. Gil hit me up and was like, bro, I work with the company that helps make the, uh, the cores for the baseballs. They are not juiced whatsoever. And I'm just like, Fucking A, bro, come on the podcast and argue with it. And I'll be like, fucking A, let's do it. So, all right. I like that they're juiced, too. Oh, I know, I know. But he's saying they're not. He's saying, hey, man, they're, they're fucking cool. They, they, they ain't juiced. They ain't got nothing extra on them. They good to go. So, um, it's Artie, since you brought that one up, I'm going to let you take the lead on that one with Gil. And uh, let's hear it out. Artie, why do you say they're juiced and why are you happy they're juiced? All right. Well, I, I'd rather have the balls juiced than the, the players juiced. For one, you know, um, them enhancing themselves, you know, using PEDs, that's just a bad sign, especially me being a teacher. I just don't like that kind of stuff because they also be other anger issues and, and a lot of domestic stuff. I, I personally, right? Right. So, but I do think the balls are juiced because last year was just a stupid numbers. I mean, ridiculous numbers. We're talking about the major league single season record was broken by o- over 600 home runs. Not 100, not two, not three, not four, not five, but over 600 home runs. We're talking 24 teams set new franchise records. Two teams broke the the single season all-time record. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, four, 14 teams set new franchise records. 24 teams had 200 plus uh, home runs, and the Dodgers, without the benefit of a DH, hit 279. That's ridiculous. And the numbers just go on and on. We had another rookie that just happened to break the rookie record that was just set two years before that with 53 home runs. And this guy was been in the minors for a while. He's never been like a big name prospect. No going wrong. I'm happy for him and stuff like that. Um, then I think the other number I saw too was in the home run derby that they broke the home run derby record by like 100 home runs in a home run derby. Come on. Tell me the balls aren't juice. I, I I like it. Don't get me wrong, but there's something to it. I I don't know what it is. I obviously that's probably where 
um, you know, your end comes in and, and really could break it down for us as to why they're not or why they are. But, you know, it takes me back to the opposite effect of, you know, they might start having to put uh, humidifiers in every uh, every clubhouse now like the Rockies do, you know? I don't know. What are yeah, your thoughts? So I, I actually saw that that was a recommendation from from uh, Robert Manford was oh. to, to have temperature control plus or minus, I think it was like, two degrees Celsius for all of the balls last year as mm. a result of, you know, everybody kind of not freaking out, but being more aware of the statistics that were just being right. exponentially driven up. <laughs> right. So I, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. I'd rather see a juice ball than a juice player any day. Right. But that being said, I, I don't, I work with the company that manufactures the pill. So the pill is, the first three layers of a major league baseball mm. these are made in costa rica um i've been to the manufacturing facility probably five or six times i've witnessed all of the quality control testing that goes on there and it's you know it's it's a pretty tight ship they they manufacture um they manufacture the core the the core is a is a, is a cork the cork is then uh, cast with a it's like a black vulcanized rubber and then that black vulcanized rubber is cast in, with two with two pieces of uh, pink vulcanized rubber mm. and the way that this process works is super controlled it's a very engineered process so everything is extremely repeatable um, and then all from from base material to end product there's checks and balances the whole way. So when this is manufactured, the density, dimensions, hardness, all of these things are monitored before the rubber uh, can even go into the compression molding system. After it goes through the compression molding system, then what they do is 100% of the pills, which is the most inner layer, is 100% quality control inspected. And it, it sounds like a like a super simple, easy test, and it really is, but it's it's something that's done by engineered and maintained instrumentation. What they do is they basically drop the, the pill from a predetermined height, it bounces off the ground, and when it bounces off the ground, it when it, on the rebound, it, it rebounds in between like a laser system, and that laser system measures how much that ball is compressing and how much it's rebounding. Um, from that process, after that is when you get the when you get the winding of the wool and you get the winding of the cotton materials. There's three different layers. It's 100% done by computers, um, so that you have the exact same tension. That's repeatable, plus or minus. Um, I think it's plus or minus 5% on the compression, on the tension, and on the amount of material that's used. And kind of a cool fact with with every single major league baseball and now every single minor league baseball is every single one is hand stitched in Costa Rica by, you know, some lady that's been trained for multiple months before they can start making major league baseball. So Wait, real quick. actually hand stitched every single one. <clears throat> real quick. Wow. You said now MLB and the minor leagues have, they right. have the same, did they not used to have the same balls? They did not used to have the same balls. So major league baseball, is uses the Rawlings baseball. Um, Rawlings is 100% manufactured in Costa Rica. Minor league baseball, and, and if you look, there was a, a pretty major difference between home runs, averages, all the major categories uh, just in the last couple of years. And all of the minor league baseballs, I think up until last year or 2018, were made in China. Oh. So now... Everybody's using the same thing, which is great. You know, you want your you want your farm league to be playing with the exact same equipment that your major leagues are, are going to be playing with. Right? Right. You don't want them to have an aluminum bat and then they get to the big leagues and now they got to use wood bat. Like it's it's just a completely different ballgame. You know? Right. So I'm just happy to know that the majors and minors, everybody's now using fucking the same ball. I didn't know this is the fucking first I ever heard that they had two different um, um, baseballs. Yeah, but, that's a good tidbit, man. I like that. But the the I thing, mean, I, 
Well, the I thing... played baseball my whole life, and I didn't I didn't even know the composition of a baseball until I started working as an engineer for these types of companies. You know. I mean, shit. I've been around baseball for thirty nine years now, and this is the first I've heard of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I ripped the 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 leather off a ball and and kind of unwinded all that madness just to see what was in the middle, but I was like fucking eight, and I'm like, oh look, a little black thing, and I threw it, and I'm like, well there that goes, and and that was done. I never knew what was what was um, involved in all that. Now, yeah, so this whole this mm-hmm. whole process is very very regulated. So the rubber that's being used, there's two different types of rubber. It's vulcanized rubber. The rubber that's being used, the virgin material that comes in, needs to pass all of these different tests, you know, within allowance of what the MLB requires, plus or minus 5% on density, hardness, how much it rebounds, uh, dimensions, which are measured to the nearest uh, thousandth of an inch. So, you know, 1.001 or 0.001, it needs to be within plus or minus 5%. So it's, it's super, super regulated. Every single pill, which is the middle, like I said, is QC inspected. And then um, a representative representative lot. So let's say every 100 baseballs that are finished. Right. A representative lot of those are then inspected um, as a complete baseball. And the MLB has this cool test that I have not seen because we're only on the plastics manufacturing side of it, the rubber side of it. But they have a really cool test. It's called the coefficient of restitution. And uh, it's Major League Baseball's officially sanctioned testing procedures. And essentially what it is, is they shoot a baseball from an air cannon at a velocity of 85 feet, 85 feet per second at a wooden wall from a distance of 8 feet. Air cannons are cool. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's giant, giant, potato, giant potato gun shooting an MLB baseball <laughs> like a Raldis Chapman's throwing it. Uh-huh. And... Uh, they measure the amount of rebound. It has to be 54.6%, uh, plus or minus 3.2%. Now so, I'm curious with, with that, who, what, what makes that determination that? How do, what, how do we have comparables to like, a, let's say these charts that I'm looking at back when, uh, I don't know, roughly 2012 when the numbers were down? That's what, I, that's what I really dove into today, right? I'm 100% on the technical and specification side of it. But what I really dug in today was there are two independent reports that were completed. One actually isn't an independent report. It's a it's a report that that uh, Rob Manford is responsible for putting the committee together, and he had the engineers at uh, Washington at Washington State University run all these different tests on thousands and thousands of baseballs. They they measured how the balls were flying. They measured how much resistance there was in the air when you throw it, hit it. They measured how much it's rebounding, all these different things. And from all of their calculations, what they found was the only thing, the only major difference between a baseball last year, 2019, and a baseball, you know, five, 10, 15 years ago was that it, it is less resistant to the air. So it's actually flying about six inches further per average home run, which that's not a make or break. That's not warning track to, to being a home run. So what do you think then but is the difference? If it's not the juice balls or... On the flip side, on the flip side, I found another independent report that was done at Kent State. And the uh, chemistry and biochemistry Kent State found that they conclude that the ball is used. What they concluded was that the rubber that's used in these baseballs is about 5% less dense. So it's actually compressing more and it's rebounding more. So you combine that action with being, with having less turbulence when it's flying through the air. And they're calculating that it's actually not six is distance gain, but like 8.9 feet of distance gain, which there you're going from some, you know, an outfield shot to the warning track or even just before the warning track to a mm. shot that's out of the park. Mm. So, so what, I, what's, I'm kind of torn on this one. And, 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 you know, I'll one give you another factor that. that I think might make a difference too. Okay, this is just my opinion and it has nothing to do with the actual baseball. Another factor. 
there's a lot of specialized pitching <clears throat> and specialized pitching means fresher arms fresher arms mean higher velocity and the easiest i don't want to say easiest or the biggest factor when it comes to hitting home runs besides uh squaring it up is actually speed like the the way the guys throw how hard they throw because more guys are throwing harder that means the, if they square it up or they make even decent contact the ball is going to go further or you know more chances of a home run of Absolutely. course the strikeout rates are really high because on the flip side guys are throwing harder but when we do or they do make contact the ball seems to go a lot further does that make sense because they're you hardly see any of these cheapy shots anymore they're they're like bombs dude you know they're going they're going way out of the park right now yeah and that that's the two scatters that i sent out brand is that home run scatter and the batting average scatter is exactly what Artie's talking about. My my thought on this is from the technical side, I don't see a major difference between a ball 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and a ball today because the testing has not changed. The quality control has not changed. The manufacturing process has not changed. But just like Artie said, what's changing is the the average of players went from an average of like 270 to high 270s mid 270s 260s around 2000 to now the average for a team is like 250 so right. it's a 20 to 25 point difference right and the reason is you've got more guys striking out you've got more guys that are looking to put numbers up on the scoreboard with one swing of the bat versus somebody like Manny Ramirez in the you know in the early 2000s that was getting 220 hits and driving in 150 RBIs on 30 to 40 home runs. So what both of you guys are trying to say is, are you saying that the players is juice then? Because all the numbers are telling you that nothing else could be happening, right? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, maybe there's, there's so many different going ways up. to beat things. They slap it all I, out of the park. I don't know. Everybody's I think it's got a just, trash can in their stadium now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think for sure one team. <laughs> they had but, something uh, going on. No, I think I think it's just a different mentality. The game has changed, right? Yeah, and there's, there's, are evolving. there is a lot of video and a lot of ways to break down your their approach to hitting. You know, the more knowledge is power, right? The more players now have more knowledge and they're spreading the knowledge. Before, it seemed like, you know, especially back in the days before, you know, uh, communications like Wi-Fi and, and cell phones and stuff like that, you know, it was hard to spread that knowledge unless it was within your own team. That's why usually teams, certain teams just dominated compared to other teams. You know, certain teams had 30 home run hitters or multiple 30 home run hitters and other teams didn't unless it was just a dude that was just totally gifted, you know? Yeah, and you look at, and, you look at two of the greatest hitters of all time, Tony Gwynn. Right, Tony Gwynn knew every single pitcher that he was going against. He knew their tendencies, and this is before you could break things down on an Excel spreadsheet and you had right. analytics guys in the front office doing this for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy had a piece of graph paper that was a notebook, and he was <clears throat> literally data recording every single pitch, every single location, and every single tendency. The other person who was doing that was Barry Bonds. Mm. And if you remember in the late 90s, early 2000s, when he was with the Giants, do you remember him and Rich Aurelia? He was the shortstop. Yeah, the shortstop for the yeah, Giants. Like 40 yeah, they got in a fist year, right? fight. Yeah, they got in a fist fight, and the reason for that fist fight was Barry Bonds was not sharing his analytic information with Rich Aurelia, who at the time was an All Star. But I mean, had he known, you know, what the maybe what the tendencies were going to be when he was batting, I mean, the guy probably could have been in the league for another five, six years. Right. Yeah, because he had a particularly good year that year. He had like 40 bombs that year. And yeah, then it kind of fell off real quick off after that. It's kind of strange. Look those, you look at those two guys and the, you know, the, the hard work that they had to putting into gathering that information for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then now you open that up. Every single team has that. Every single team is handing them a spreadsheet before right. every game that says, this is what we've seen the tendencies the tendencies are, you know, and whether or not they read it, whether or not they digest it and put it into effect, that's down to the player. But the information is there that wasn't there years ago. Yeah, and it's a trip because now you'll see, like, remember when it first started happening where players were taking out, like, a little cheat sheet to and put in their back pockets and stuff like that? And then yeah. it started spreading to um, pitchers having a little cheat sheet on their hat. 
And that's when it really became an issue where they're like, okay, this guy, you know, this is a, this is a pitch sequence. We're going to go after this guy because he tends to jump on first pitch fastballs or, you know, he sits on an off-speed pitch and because of whatever reason, you know, because it's a right-handed pitcher, whatever it is. But that started being a big issue. I remember one of the first things that, or one of the first guys that I remember started to really use that analytics a lot, and I thought it was real cool. It was when I was a little younger, um, was Todd Helton. From the Colorado oh, yeah. Rockies, that dude First wanted, yeah, he wanted like video of himself and all that stuff, like put on like an iPad, you know, or a cell phone, or a, a, and they're not even existing, or an iPod, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, those guys changed the game. Yeah, they started to, and because before it was just some guys would do it, and some wouldn't, and now it's like everybody does it, you know. Even before, right before that, I remember Manny Ramirez and like Barry Bonds used to go do their i. I, uh, eye training testing just to get an edge where they could um, which was like a big old written report so then other dudes started doing that eye testing as well too or eye training to make sure that their eyes were sharp you know it's yeah, super cool it's, I mean, a, it's amazing how much technology has made the game of baseball more analytically like they look at it more analytically than they did before. Like, Hey man, you just go in there and swing until you get your swing and hit the ball. It's more like, okay, now, okay. When we go up against this pitcher, you know, he has a tendency to throw low, um, sinking fastball to the left-handed batters, uh, more than they are to the right. To the left-handed batters, it only breaks, you know, eight degrees for the right-handed batters. It breaks 12 degrees. So when you're a right-hander, you know, watch that because it'll, you know, break a little harder than, than if you're a left-handed batter for some reason. But it, and it and it changes the way you walk up to the plate um, because you know, okay, this is this is okay. He already gave me uh, two fastballs low and, and, and inside. You know, usually during this time he throws a changeup um, middle away. and so you know you're, you're what you're looking for. You know what you're 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 expecting to try and to hit. Which I think now is it's helping batters. I mean, obviously, you can see what happens when batters know what's coming um, with the the Astros. But right. if you start getting into tendencies, if you start getting into to rhythms with with certain pitchers, then you kind of know. Okay, cool. Like he already like I always, I always and I know already you're gonna talk shit, but every time Trout goes in there and he's there whatever count blank and two, whatever the, when he's <laughs> whenever he's blank and two, he always calls timeout. And he steps Never out of the box. Knees. Yeah, hey, whatever. <laughs> but he always calls timeout when he's got that two, um, the two strikes on him. He always calls. He's, hey, timeout real quick. He steps out, and it's. I think it fucks with the the pitcher. Is like, oh fuck, did he figure out what I'm gonna throw? Did he remember? Hey, I have a tendency to do this, this, or that. I think it second guesses pitchers and makes them go, okay, now I have to hold the ball a little longer before I throw the ball. He's not the only one. Um, he, Albert he might Albert does be it too. Setting as a hitter too, though, because he is down 0-2. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Strikes. He's got it. He's also resetting as hitter to say, all right, time to shorten up a little bit because I'm down in the count. So now we're just thinking uh, foul line to foul line, hit it where it's at, something like that. But you're resetting as a hitter, you know? Mm -hmm. um, another think, thing. Yeah, go for it. I think it gives you a really, really good appreciation for the old school guys too, right? Like the guys that didn't have that. Yeah. Right. I think Vladimir Guerrero went up swinging first pitch, no matter if it was in, <laughs> if it was in the sand or if it was on the plate. Right. Like, dude went up swinging and, yeah, he, and the guy, he was a triple threat you know yeah. he was a, a triple crown threat multiple times with the Expos. yeah and, you know it just makes you realize that those old school guys that just went up and just hit the ball on talent and strength like man that's that's an appreciation for those guys all right those still yeah. though aren't those guys still in the game today though you know those there's still guys that are kind of stepping up to the plate and taking out and let analytics out of it and just swinging for the fences right there if there is there's only a few guys um trying to think of who might be somebody that just swings for the fence every time he goes up there nowadays yeah. um but but mixed with mixed with talent too not just you got to swing in front of the fences. Just I mean, just because you, just cause you, you know if you hit the ball. just because you know a fastball is coming doesn't mean you're gonna hit the fastball. I mean, people yeah, get right. people get blown by you regardless. You can knock on that fucking trash can all you want. Here comes a fastball. I dare you to hit it. You know what I mean? Or all this Chapman throws 103 fucking miles an hour. Unless you're timed <laughs> out for a 103 mile an hour fastball, you're you're not touching it. You know what I mean? Um, that's why Altuve was sitting on the slider and hit it out. Yeah, and that's why he didn't understand 
how that dude could be sitting on a slider and hit it out. Yeah. You know, that's part of the problem. You know, it's easier to hit. You know, it's coming. And the left-handed slider to a right-handed hitter is not that difficult. Now, r- lefty slider or lefty hitter, that's pretty difficult. And, you know, that, and, and the same thing could be said for, like, how you guys were talking about, like, the video and players and stuff like that. Right before the Dodgers in the World Series well, against the Red Sox. Oh, the Dodgers. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, Craig Krimble. See, I talk about the Dodgers. I don't talk about a player. Shut your mouth. And keep talking. Whoa. There's a difference. Whoa, was, There's a difference. Was, ooh, wee, I like that. You know, it's not like, oh, Cody Bellinger, the MVP, or, you know, Kershaw, the Joaquin Hall of Famer, blah, blah, blah. He is, though. We, we talk about a team, not just one guy. Uh-huh. You know? Uh, cause teams won't win games. Anyway, yeah, exactly. like a Lakers fan so, too, you know? <laughs> so, so well, what I was talking about was, uh, Craig Kimbrough from the Red Sox was tipping pitches and you could see it on videos and boom, word started getting out real quick. And you know, who brought it to Kimbrough's attention that, that he was tipping pitches was Eric Gagne, who, if you guys know, pitched for both the Red Sox and the Dodgers, but who was a manager, who was a manager of, of the Red Sox when they wanted off? It was Alex Cora, and Alex Cora and Eric Gagne were really close friends, so he passed along that information to uh, Alex Cora, and then when he came into into the World Series with the Dodgers, he wasn't tipping his pitches anymore, and they revealed it after the World Series. They said, yeah, Gagne uh, got a hold of us and told us, you know, that he was tipping pitches, he was doing this, he was doing that, and he fixed it, and sure enough, because he Krimble looked like a whole different guy when he was in that World Series, but he's always had that kind of talent. But again, any little competitive advantage that you can get is going to give these professional hitters because they're not just like, you know, high school or college ball players. They're professional hitters. Dudes are just at a whole different level and will take advantage of the smallest little detail, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's fucking wild what they could do with a little bit of information and the talent that they have, what they could do, how they could do damage on the balls. And, th- and that's, you know, probably you said that. What what they can do with 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 the little bit of information, yeah. talented guys. What they can do a little bit. That's really you. You hit the nail on the head right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You give them a little bit. Of, you give them a little bit of freaking uh, of of more knowledge or, or what's going to happen. They can do so much more when they're that talented. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. they're in the major leagues. That's why they're not right. fucking playing in in Saskatchewan, fucking in the triple minor league, whatever. Um, that that's why they're there. It's it's the ability to take the smallest piece of information that you can to better yourself to the point where you're doing amazing things. Look at o, look at Otani um, last or two years ago when he had that leg kick coming from Japan. He was hitting like a hundred coming out of spring training, and he was like, "Oh no, I'm just trying stuff out. I'm just trying stuff out." And the hitting coach got with him, and he went from a high leg kick to kind of a leg twist kind of thing, and he was fucking raking. I mean, he wasn't, you know, 500. So you lost me. You were, he was talking about hitting 100, hitting 100 pitching, or hitting 100 hitting? H- hitting. I'm talking about hitting. So he had yeah. a high leg kick when he was in hitting spring training. 100. Like, uh, Yeah, he was hitting like 121 or something like that. It was something stupid. Oh, batting average. Batting average. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. my bad. I should have said batting average. My bad. I figured No, 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 because track. I really thought you were talking about his like. He's a pitcher, and I was like, "Oh, dude, you topping out?" I was like, "Doesn't he still top out close to 100?" Oh no, yeah, you know, he still tops out at 100. But no, um, as a hitter, he had a high leg kick, and he wasn't hitting very well. It just, it wasn't right, right, right. what he did in Japan did not transfer completely over into the majors. And at the beginning of the season, he went from that high leg kick to kind of like a leg twist, plant and push kind of thing, and he was hitting way better. Like his mm-hmm. his batting average was almost uh what 280 or 270 right around there so it went up from the 120 it was during spring training to that and it was it was almost immediate i I remember uh i think it was kirchin said like oh i thought he was gonna be a bust because he came in here he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn and people were talking about like man maybe the angels fucked up maybe the angels didn't you know they they got a lemon on him and and you know obviously things are different here than they are there and then he just immediately just switched that little thing and fixed his timing and he was fucking hitting the ball so it's crazy what an athlete of that magnitude can do with just a little bit of help or a little bit of of knowledge it's crazy yeah he didn't lose the power no. that's that's what's crazy you know when you make when you make that type of tweak to your game and you're able to keep the good things and add something that you were lacking, man, that's, you know, that's what separates that 
less than 1% from everybody else, from guys that are really, really good, guys that go first-round draft pick but never make it, that's what separates it. Yep. It's fucking crazy. Um, Moving on from the balls. We'll still talk about baseball, but still. Um, this week, today, actually, should have... always got balls on your brain? Man. Always, bro. <laughs> didn't, didn't you hear the pre-show, man? The pre-show is all about balls. All about balls. Okay. Um, this uh, this week in baseball would have been um, opening week. We would have had opening week. We would have been opening uh, at Angel Stadium today against well, the I'm Astros. Right now. Oh, there you go. As you should be. God damn right, it! I got, uh, I got my hat. I got my baseball guys. I know you guys are sad today. <laughs> no, it, it's God. pretty bad. It's pretty bad. There would have been there would have been at least seventeen fights today by the Dodger fans that showed up to <laughs> to boo the, uh, the 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 Astros. There would have been at least two missing weaves from some cholas that uh, got in a little scrap in the parking lot. Um, there would have been twenty two arrests for being two eighteen deportations. <laughs> I just learned something new. Cholas wear weaves too. Oh, oh hell yeah, bro! <laughs> and uh, all that before fucking opening fucking pitch. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, but it w- it would have been an interesting weekend. I know that Joe Madden had said already that he instructed his pitchers not to intentionally throw at the Astros players. But I would be remiss if I didn't see one or two guys up in the bullpen, third, fourth inning, just you know, in case something got away and whatnot. Um, so yeah, we miss. We miss, you know, opening day. We will get there when we get there. Hopefully, they, they're talking about um, maybe doing... July 4th is a yeah, date I Yeah, that's heard. the big number. <clears throat> I heard July 4th, too. That would be a great day to, to start it off. Um, I think it would be awesome because when do we not come together to watch baseball? Then on the 4th of July, it's just it's a big day. Um, I think that would be a great one. Um, you know I, why they said July 4th, too, though, right? Why is that? Uh, because Canada um, shut down all major sporting events in, through June, so it has to be after July. Oh yeah, because the Blue Jays are over there, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're targeting. I, okay, I didn't well. think. I didn't think of that. That makes yeah. sense, though. It does. That's what I'm here for. Not, <laughs> that's why you're here. <laughs> Not only to provide the balls, but to mm-hmm. uh, to to re- to remind us about things. Um, I wouldn't just hear a lot. Trap. A lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people are are kind of forgetting what the Astros did, but I I think it's just calming down because of what's going on with the COVID nineteen. But I I don't think at any point in time when we get back to to actual meaningful baseball games that the Astros are not going to be put front and center again. Um, right. I think they're going to be it's going to be a long season for them, regardless of how many actual games they play. It's going to be a long season for them. Uh, and then the Red Sox were on the verge of getting punished from the team when this all went down. And the Red Sox, speaking of fucking Boston, is uh, is, is getting hit pretty hard. The Mookie Betts got traded to the Dodgers. Uh, Chris Sale went down. He's got Tommy John surgery. He won't be back until late next year. Um, and then Tom Brady goes to Tampa Bay. So yes. Boston, Boston yes. is hurting right now. Shut up, Errol. Boston is hurting right now um, from all kinds of different angles. Um, they're they're going to have a shitty year in, in sports. I don't know. You think so? Uh, dude, the Red Sox. I think so. Red Sox Why? are getting hurt. Why? They just lost one pitcher that didn't do that well last year. So that means they, they still have they their still big have pitcher. David Price? David Price is gone. He's with the Dodgers. He's with the David Dodgers. Price is the Dodgers. They've oh, had so many years of – the Boston as a city has had so many years of a good run between the Patriots, the Bruins, and all that. They they could deserve to take a year off. Relax yeah, over there. They'll be fine, right? <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll be, be all right. right. Nobody just, wants to see the like Yankees Belichick win, said, right? right? They're, they're like, when they ask Belichick, oh, these guys have been with you through thick and thin, he's like, oh, there hasn't been a lot of thin here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fucking one from the coach. It was. Um, I'm still going to be surprised. I mean, I. I think that we're going to play this this year, but I was telling already last week, if they cancel the season for any for some ungodly reason, they cancel the season. Mookie Betts will technically be a free agent at the end of the year. Now I know Artie's take on this. I'd like to hear you guys. So if the season is canceled, Mookie Betts becomes a free agent. Do the Dodgers sign him back, or do you think he hits the free agent market and ends up somewhere else? I think he's got to test the free agent market. I mean, Mookie Betts is it got to be a top five player it's you know it's probably trout one him too and then and then you look at you know maybe christian yelich a couple other guys that are in the mix of that of that 
elite first tier, man, when you when you can test the market in baseball as compared to you know some of the other sports where your full contract is guaranteed, you have to. Well, why wouldn't you? Okay, who do no, you? you it, it sounds like you got to test the market too, but I don't even think there's going to be a season. I know you guys are kind of hoping and wishing and praying, but I, how do you have a season with everything going on right now? I mean, obviously, they're talking about starting in July, so we got two and a half months to go. So, yeah, this if can't you last have forever. Something, if you have one good. case of of COVID nineteen at any random baseball game. And anything happens to any of those players out there on that field or any fan in the baseball stands, I don't think you can still do it. I, I think can, this is no. going to last for a very and long here, time. And here's my thing, though. Here, here's my thing now. You say if, if anything happens to one person at one game, no matter where they are. Yeah. Okay. So we work at a home and improvement store. Yes. Just found out a day or two ago an employee at one of those stores on the East Coast has died from COVID-19. Yes. Because he or she got it during their while they're at work, right? Well, they closed the store down for a day or two for cleaning, and then reopened right back up. So they there's also been there's also been somebody from the Yankees minor league system that had COVID yeah. nineteen. Two, two minor so, leaguers, correct? Yeah, two minor two minor leaguers. So I mean, it's yep. already it's already there. You at some point everything's got to turn back on. Yeah. Sports has to turn back on. The economy's got to turn back on. Everybody that still has a job has to go back to work. Yeah. At some point, it's going to turn on. What, what day is it going to be, man? I'm, I'm the last person to ask about that. But <laughs> at some point, it, it is going to turn back on. And that's, you know, that's why I think, Brent, your question is great. Like, that's See, I, I, I've said Mookie tests the market, but that doesn't mean he doesn't come back to the Dodgers. There's only so many teams no, he doesn't. that could there's actually... Only, there's only a handful of teams that could, that that could afford, afford him. him. Yeah. Only a handful of teams that could afford so, him. So, um, Gil, let me ask you this, because I know we, we talked about this last week already. Where do you think, other than the Dodgers ponying up and paying him, where do you think he ends up? Give me three teams. Yankees, Mets, and my third team... Padres. Not three of the teams we were talking about last week. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. I, I think... said the Mets. Remember? You, you said the Mets. Yes, I, yeah, you're right. Yes, you're I right. Said you said the Mets. The Mets. I the said Mets that's where are... I think he ends up at. The Mets are notorious for overpaying for a guy that's just leaving his prime. Which I don't think Mookie Betts is leaving his prime. I mean, no, the guys, correct. the guy's got a. If he stays healthy, he's probably got seven prime years left. Seven prime years left. That the being Mets said, are a he's probably fire. Why would you want to go to the Mets? Oh, no doubt. Money, bro. Money. <laughs> Money time. Look at Manny Machado. Look at Manny Machado and going to the look Padres. At, at Manny Machado. But he's I like, I don't. He's like, I don't care if they're going to win or not. I'm getting paid. Right. I look at Mookie Betts as a person who would like to win something. You know, I know he they won in Boston, and which was a good thing. But he's a, well, he's a, a winner than a getting money. No. They won, but they're about to get. In trouble for their win, but you know. Yes. <laughs> but but don't you think that also comes into play because he won? Maybe he's just trying to cash in. I think that's so. Good, I I would good. think. Okay, I'm, I'm a hot commodity right now. We're gonna play a shortened season if we play a season at all. If not, then all they remember the last thing I did was win a World Series and was like runner up for MVP. So of course he's gonna go. I think he's gonna go out there. He's gonna he's gonna test the market. I think somebody's gonna pay him big. I think he's gonna be really good uh, uh, for at least the next three four years, and then you're gonna start to see a little bit of a drop off. But he, I mean, if you're worth it, go out there and get your money, man. Fuck. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It, he's probably looking ten to thirteen year contract in the three hundred fifty million dollar range. I can see that. Who's going to pay him for a 10-year contract? I don't know. Is he going to take the 10-year contract? Or is he going to try and take something like five or six and then try and get another big contract at, at the back end of his career? What are the Dodgers offering him? They haven't. I don't think they have. Okay. They don't have to what? offer. They can't offer him anything right now. Okay. Why not? Because baseball operations have suspended, so you can't do contract stuff. Eh, under the table. They could, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're talking. I'm sure there's a couple of text messages just floating around. But officially, they haven't done any. They they haven't been they able to officially the do something. Dodgers, you know? 
They are. I they think are. all those conversations are happening off the record, man. Because you look at you look at NFL free agency. It opened what nine business days ago, something like that, about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, NFL free agency you... opened, yeah. and you had like fifteen people signed within the first yeah. fifteen minutes. Yeah, you think they structured true. a contract in fifteen minutes? No, they... all that stuff was done before. I said that the NBA does all, all that stuff on the back channels and stuff like that all the time too. I remember that's how the Angels got Vladimir Guerrero, and the Dodgers didn't get him. Mm-hmm. They didn't get approved by the commissioner. Damn it! Damn it! No, that was that was the Orioles, man. The Orioles were the one who put the bid in on Vladdy. The Dodgers had already a contract uh, lined up, and it got blocked by the Dod- uh, by Major League Baseball. It was reminded me very in, similar was that to the one uh, Chris in Paul. 2005. Oh, it was when he was coming from. Uh, it might have been the one before that. From the yeah, Expos? from from the Expos. Yeah, where he was a free agent, yeah, and it didn't okay, get approved or something. It got blocked, and then the Angels came in, swooped him. And I'm like, damn it, because best that... decision the Angels ever made. Yeah, <laughs> one and only Hall of Famer for the Angels. Yeah. Did he go in as Angel? Yes. Went in as an Angel. Yes, he did, sir. They were talking about having him go in wearing half and half hat, fucking angels and 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 expos, and yeah, they're like, he had his best years with the expos. He had some amazing years with the angels too. I said his best years. All right, I said amazing. So <laughs> he got all defensive. Comments? <laughs> I, I will not calm them down. They are they are free to do what they want. <laughs> He, he was their Mike Trout back then. <laughs> he was. So that's what we had, man. When, when you don't win many man. games, you just hold down to players, individual accolades. You got to do what you got to do no, to survive. Winning games. They were winning games with Vlad Guerrero. From 2005 to 2009, they had, I think, three, three or four AL West titles, and they went to the ALCS twice. And two times that they went to the ALCS, they got super, super screwed over. One uh, against was by the White the Twins, Sox, right? One no, the, was by the no, it couldn't have been the twins. Pearson. Twins haven't been in the, the World Series since back in the eighties, I think. Um, but, yeah, you're right. It was the. But White I know Sox the White Sox. Sox. They got it was hosed the White Sox by the White Sox. And it was AJ Pierzynski. Yes. AJ Pierzynski had blocked the plate. Uh, I think it was like on the third strike drop. Blocked the plate. Didn't let the runner go. Ended up throwing the guy out at first. That would have been the game ceiling run, and the Angels were up. I think three games to zero at that point. Yeah. And then they ended up losing the series after that. Well, the way that I remember funny. it was Perzinski had the phantom um, mechanism with the umpire. So Perzinski um, swung and missed. And then he looked back and the angels were walking into the dugout and the catcher was like, he, he pointed to or showed the umpire the glove that he had the ball and the umpire gave him his mechanism, right? Saying he's yeah, out. He's out, right? And then Przinsky oh, yeah, yeah. still ran at first. And then they and called him safe. Yeah. Base, extend the inning. I, I, wa- I, 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 I watched that game the other day because I was, you know, missing baseball. I watched the game, and yeah, they went through that, and you can see the the umpire point with his left hand at the glove, like there's the ball, and he gives him the the your out movement. Mm-hmm. And everybody's walking off the field, and Przinsky starts fucking bolting down to the first base, and then he's safe. And they're like, "What do you, what do you, what are you talking about? What's going on? What do you mean? Like, what, what do you mean he's safe? You just called him out." And Sosha ran out there, and he's like, "Bro, you gave him the fucking sign. You said he's out, or he would have right. thrown him out at first, or tagged him. He was just standing in there." Mm-hmm. And they let the play go, and history will tell you that the Angels lost after that. Yeah. I've, I've never been more been more happy to be wrong. Because I have tried to black that up out of my memory for so long, I'm so glad that I was. <laughs> I actually did that out of my mind. Yeah, no, you were just a little bit off, but it was a little bit off. It was the I fa- remember the guy, I remember the team. Yeah, it was the phantom fucking, as Artie calls it, the mechanism. But, but for those of you guys at home, the mechanism being the signal that a umpire gives for a strike, a ball, or an out. The, it's very definitive, and they have to do it very definitively so that they can show you that this is what the call was, that there's no guesswork. And if you look at that video, the umpire gives that little the little fist shake and a point, and that's you're an out. And he let him run up to the fucking first base, and then he was safe. And it's like, the fuck just happened? Anyways, I'm going to fucking have a fucking breakdown here if we keep talking about this shit. <laughs> hey, and, and you know what? I was looking at this. Uh, they're damn right. He... He, um, Vlad is the first "quote unquote" angel to go into the Hall of Fame, uh, into the Hall of Fame wearing the yeah. Angels hat. Yeah. Wow. 
Number two uh-huh. will be Mike Trout, and then we'll Let's see. Felt bad for him there, huh? <laughs> he just. I'll take it, bro. I'll, I'll take it. it all day, twice on Sunday. You know, you know they they don't really give him the choice because you know uh, Wade Boggs wanted to go in as a Tampa Bay Devil Ray. Oh, they they gave Vladdy the choice because I remember that was that was a big thing. Was who was he going to go with? Was it going to be Montreal or was it going to be Anaheim? And I remember like. I remember texting Brand about that because we are diehard Angel fans. We shared season seats for years, and man, we were worried about that because he was, you know, he was the resurrection at, at Angel Stadium for so many years. Yeah, it was. And it, it was uh, a... I remember that that he did decide to go in with the Angels cap. It was the most wonderful thing I had heard, other than Mike Trout being an MVP. Uh, <laughs> better than my kids being born. <laughs> Better than, you know. Are you still talking about Trout? Yes. Yes. <laughs> People lose respect. I was actually I was actually talking about Vladdy, but that's fine. You want to bring Trout into this, we can bring Trout. Speaking of Both bringing. Number 27. Yes. Speaking of bringing players into this, Justin Turner, I don't know if you guys heard, he proposed the home run derby to end extra inning games after the 10th inning. Kind of like a shootout. That shot, like, let me fucking talk, god damn it. It's like a shootout in hockey when they're done after so many periods they get they each get five shots and winner from there goes it would allow people what they're saying it would allow people to go to bed sooner get off get stop watching the game you know when things go on 15 16 17 innings only about 10 percent of the games throughout the league go into extra innings i think it would be pretty interesting to see a shootout quote unquote five balls get your best guy up there Let's see, however many home runs you hit is what you get for to add to your score. Other team goes up. You tie up again. You go one for one at that point. And, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how that dynamic would work. They'd have to put that into the minors first and, and or, or spring training and see how it would work out one or two games just to see how it would go. But I think it'd be pretty exciting to see that kind of thing, kind of like watching, like I said, um, a shootout in either soccer or hockey. So they're basically bringing that into baseball. You're saying that's stupid, Artie. Yes. Why? <clears throat> because it's never been a part of baseball. That's that's just dumb. That's that's called a home run derby. Well, that's basically what he's saying, bringing a home run derby to the extra inning games. It's never going to happen. Guarantee it will never happen. And see, for uh, me, that sounds – see, I, I think that's is- – problem uh, I, I see with baseball a little bit is you got two different sides some people want to speed it up and make it newer and make it fun and you got the traditional old boys network where like Artie's opinion where he just stated he doesn't want it because he doesn't want it to change so when you got to make the game a little bit faster to attract the youth how do you do that why not with the home run derby at the end of the game to see who's going to win mm-hmm. Maybe like or, or the money that they play the players. <laughs> True, keep you know, keep yeah. playing. Fucking, I don't care if it's thirty eight fucking innings. You're gonna keep playing. You you're making fucking a hundred million dollars a fucking strike there. So go fucking right. throw some more. Uh, and, and I told you, you know, I just think football players are so screwed on their on their contracts, and you know, if you they cut you and you're done. You know, it's all guaranteed money that you can get basketball and baseball it's if you're hurt you're still getting paid no matter yeah. what they cut you you're still getting paid you go you become josh hamilton that they pay you to go play against you and you still get paid yeah don't bring that black eye mother goddamn shit over here Artie. Don't. <laughs> goddamn right, bring david, josh hamilton. Or, or david justice right was, okay was with uh, the yankees and then they traded him to oakland to play against them right yeah i love that part of the movie though when he's acting like he he's he's hot shit for those of you guys not know what I'm talking about, but the uh, the Moneyball movie, and he's right. and he's like they're paying you to play for us. They 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 are so confident in how terrible you are <laughs> yeah. that they're gonna pay you to play against them because they know they're gonna beat you. And he was just like, "Oh shit, fuck." <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Eye opener. Yeah. What about you, Gil? What do you think? Home run derby after the tenth inning? Terrible idea. You know, I would be for it if you told me like the fifteenth inning, but you're talking about one fucking inning. Of, okay. Of extra. Innings? Okay, then Let, let's, ca- let's, call, let's call. Let's call. Let's call it. Okay, let's say the fifteenth inning then. If it goes past the fifteenth inning. Okay. End of the fifteenth inning. Um, still tied two two. All right, now we're bringing in five pitches. Um, you get your best hitter out there. At the end of that, we go one to one, and whoever misses first loses. 
I, I would say 15th. Okay, I'd be willing to listen to it there because that's already half of another game. Does that make sense? Yeah. But one inning past a normalcy of a game, get the fuck out of here. You know? What like, about? What about so that'd be like that'd be like having a free throw contest or, or a dunk contest for the NBA. <laughs> this is true. I would say like a three point shootout, but still, dunk contest would be fucking hilarious, <laughs> right? Um, because that's all that's all um personal perspective and how you feel like you want to rate them. But you can't deny right, right. you either make a three pointer or you don't. It either goes in or it doesn't. Game a horse or something. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> that I would have watched that shit all day. It's the end of the NBA Finals, Game Seven. They're tied at a hundred. All right, guys, we're going into Game of Horse. Well, Pick I your best it was guy. Cool the they did the All Star Game this year, where it was straight up to twenty four. Mm -hmm. At the end. And the way they did it, and then the game got got finished on a, a free throw, you know? Yeah. I, I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was real cool. The players played hard, you know? It was, it was awesome. I thought it was awesome. I, I'm all for it, but the 10th inning, no, that'll never happen. 15th? I, I'm going to listen 15th. All right. I'm talking about, now we're getting really talking about something, you know? What do you think, Gil? 15th sounds interesting. I'd listen to it. I'm, I'm on the same boat as Artie. And it's it's not so much of, like, this is the way things have always been. I, I hate that phrase. I, I hate it in, in business. I hate it in sports. You know, you should always try to modify things to make it better. But that being said, if you're going to win a baseball game, you should win by playing baseball. You know, you, you shouldn't win a football game from – a field goal contest at the end of the game <laughs> if it's tied after two quarters of overtime you know that that's what i want to see i want to see a full baseball team a full football game i i don't want to see things go into where it becomes a skills competition well put do the, the old softball team rules right do the softball rules put a runner at second freaking to start off the inning after like i don't know the 12th inning or something that'd be interesting <clears throat> last out yeah. gets to go to second base yeah, something like that. You know? Super interesting. Yeah, something, that, that... something like that would be real interesting because, you know, what what makes all sports more interesting is having immediate consequences, right? Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that football does so great is you've got sixteen games, you know, seventeen you now. Yeah, going into seventeen, but baseball you got one hundred sixty-two. Basketball you got, I think it's eighty-four or eighty-six. There's just there's so much space where first place is 10 12 15 games ahead of somebody else that you know it, it doesn't even like it doesn't get the the juices going to to watch that game but when you've got something that's make or break in an inning two innings five innings super super interesting you're going to get a lot more clicks you're going to get a lot more eyes that are watching that and you know like errol mentioned you're making things go faster if you do that after 13 innings you're not seeing 18 inning games anymore. Right. Okay. I like that idea better. Okay. All right. I'll calm down a little bit. I like that. I, want, <laughs> I want the games to end. It, it, it takes me a lot of for some of these games to end. So anything you mm -hmm. propose that's going to make them end a little faster, I'll take it. But I like your idea better than that. I'll take it. Earl wants to do it after the fifth inning. <laughs> <laughs> after two innings, guys, we're done. After one, one time around the – once you go once around the batting order – that's it, guys. We're going to go ahead and call I, it. I do understand what you guys are saying because I do enjoy watching a baseball game. I've seen a couple of them live. I don't watch too many on TV. But I understand the game a little bit. But they do last a very long time. And I don't have that much time. I don't have four or five hours to put into a game. If you can end it faster, please get it, get it to end faster. That's all, right. all I'm saying. All right. Do you – and Artie, do you guys watch games other than your team, like a full game? I do like four or five games a week or will you watch like the Wednesday oh, night no, game no, and Sunday have, night game? Yeah, I don't have yeah, like that. Probably two. Yeah, you're probably right. Wednesday night. Maybe it just depends what the week is like, you know. I am a teacher, so I'm off on the summer, so that's probably why I'm also different from other people and watch more games than most people. But yeah, I'll watch them, you know, every chance I get. I I particularly even like football. I don't watch one football game. I love the red zone. So I'd rather see something where they're going into every game or you know when a, a game's close or it's a good matchup i mean already you've you know? been you've been to my house man we'll watch fucking three games at the same time yeah, just fucking exactly we're watching everything <laughs> we got two games yeah. on the big tv one on the computer and one on the little tv 
Like we're watching everything at all times. I mean, the average and, and to go into with 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 um at the arrow here, the average baseball game is three hours, five minutes, and thirty five seconds long. How they got it down to the second? I mean, average, do your thing, whatever. Um, but average is about three hours of fucking game time. Then I know the biggest thing was like sometimes games would go into their you know, four hour mark, four and a half hour mark. Every once in a while, you're watching a, a Yankees game. All of a sudden, it's the next day on the other side of the fucking earth. It's fucking... So I see why they're trying to slow it down, or they're trying to, to speed it up, I should say. The um, the, the the amount of game. and Because and, it, it is hard, if you're not invested into the games, to watch... To sit down and watch something for three hours. You know what I mean? Um, not, I, I love fucking baseball. I can sit here and watch, I watch three old games and still fucking sitting at the edge of my seat watching game six of the 2002 World Series. You know, I know what's going to happen, but I still fucking enjoyed it and it's fucking awesome. Um, so I get it. Do you want to speed it up a little bit for people that aren't as invested as some of us are in, in the sport of baseball, but at the same time, you don't want to speed it up so fast. You're taking away from the experience and what it is. I'm still tripping on this whole Vlad thing. I'm looking at it. Did you know he played for, for the Los Angeles Angels and the Anaheim Angels? That's crazy. How do you know they were different? All right, I'm going to throw something. Just like the Brooklyn Dodgers <laughs> and the LA Dodgers. You want to play this game, Artie? We can play this goddamn game, Artie. I'll take you all to his. They, the, they didn't even move stadiums. I will I'll hit you with the. <laughs> <laughs> with the goddamn uh, history lesson right now, Artie. All right, calm it, your fucking tits. It was in tits. the same stadium as I believe it was called Angel Stadium, and it's still always it was, it was Edison. Edison it was Edison Field oh, before. Oh, thank you. It, 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 it was right, Edison right. Field. You shut your I dirty whore mouth. I know. All you do, all we do, is talk about balls here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they're being busted or they're fucking being played with, we're talking about balls. Um, who do you think the home run king will be in a shortened season? Uh, Roland Acuna. Joey Gallo, Mike Trout, Nelson Cruz, Bryce Harper. Who's going to hit the most on in a shortened season? I know last year, Trout had 45. Gallo had 22 in 70 games. He got hurt, um, but he's oh, definitely wow. ready to rock and roll. Roland Acuna, which is which already you're saying that everybody is trying to get him first in all the um, fantasy leagues now. There, he's right. the one that everybody wants to get. Um, he had 41 last year. Nelson Cruz, 41 as well. Bryce Harper had 35. He's probably the, the guy bringing up the, the rear on that one. Um, any other standouts that you think are going to have a chance to take away the home run title? Obviously in a shortened season, not the whole 162 games. Yelich. Yelich, I agree. Yeah, this could he's, be. Uh, he's got a big he's... stick, man. For being, for being a scrawnier guy, man, he's just got a sweet swing. Yeah. He does, and he was on pace to to lead the majors. You know, he was a triple yeah. crown threat till he got hurt. I mean, the he dude hit forty. Threat. He hit forty something without with a month left to play in the season. Let's I think, see. I think a big a big big change with Mike Trout having a shot at this this year is going to be where he hits in the lineup. Mike Sosha, Mike Sosha was just so so complacent with making sure that Albert Pujols was happy. I, I, you look at Mike Trout hitting in the one or two slot for the majority of his career. The guy's a number three hitter. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. He's got to be in the three slot. And, I mean, he had no protection in front of him. And behind him, Albert Pujols, who's historically been a great hitter, Well, you can't technically had it protect he... anybody in front of him. You have to protect them behind them. Yeah, but... You've got to protect him behind him, but he also had no runners on base in front. Of him. What's that got to do you with know? the home run derby? If you're trying to hit home runs, they all count the same. Whether there's someone. Here's the thing. Not. Here's the thing, because that's not how Mike Trout plays. Mike, if if Mike Trout's in the two hole and the the leadoff batter, whether it be Cole Calhoun back in the day, Eric Ibar, um, you know, all these different guys who hit in front of him, if if you've got one out, Mike Trout is a team player, so he would go up. And instead of trying to hit a home run with a person on base, he's got one out. He wants to be on base for that number three hitter. So he's looking at getting either a base hit or a double, you know, and, and he's he's got a different swing. So I think this year with Joe Madden being the wizard that he is and using, I would be very, very surprised if Pujols hits in the three, four, probably he's going to be in the five spot, maybe even six. 
Well, and for I sure he's not going to be in the ball. three or four because he's got uh, you, you got, got Trout, now. you got that Trout and Tony two bags. To yeah, I think... absolutely. Well, you look at you look at Mike Trout's career. He hit him in the one or two slot for probably ninety percent of his career. Yeah, with no backup right. behind him, no backup behind him, and either one or two outs in front of him, he's not going for the home runs. Put Why him can... in the three slot yeah, with yeah, Rendon behind him. Yeah. I, I think you're looking at 50, 51 to fifty. To 55 home runs. Well, see, now we have a bet we set up last week. Artie says Trout will never hit 50 home runs or more. Yeah, he'll never hit 50. You want to get in on this, Gil? I'm in. All right. I'm in. I a, mean, this year is going to be a short year. So. It's not going to. That's what I told I, him. It's I, not going to happen this year. Said, he's never going to hit 50. <laughs> and you don't do it as you get older. You either you do, do it now or never. There's been a lot of guys that hit a lot of home runs as they got older. Yeah, only the ones are on the juice. Kristen Yelich, by the way, last year threw uh, hit 44 home runs in 161 games. Uh, game. No, he didn't play 161. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I got, the, I, I got the hits. My bad. He had 161 hits, but he had 44 home runs last year. It's not giving me the amount of games he played. If we're talking about a shortened season, what about Aaron Judge? I know he gets injured a lot, but he hits a lot of home runs too. Isn't Aaron Judge home. hurt right now? He's hurt right now. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole Yankees <laughs> roster is hurt. He's going to be healthy by the time the season starts. Yes, yes. And he may not last the whole season, but the season is going to be shortened with the with everything going on. He has a better chance of hitting more home runs than anybody else does. If he could stay healthy. If he could stay healthy. But he's only been if hurt he once. Healthy, yeah. He's only been uh, playing two I years. I believe he's only no, played two he's, years. No, it's been more than two years. No. Yelich played 103 games, 130. Yeah, I was going to look at Yelich's stuff right now, too. Um, last year, freaking... Um, yeah, 130 games, and he had 44 bombs, dude. Jeez. That's Judge, Judge, had, Judge had 27 bombs last year. And how many games? Mm, games... 102. 102? 102. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. 102 games so played. He's, he's been in the big since 2016. The year, yeah, but that don't count. That played. year, that year don't count. That first year, yeah. The a, the a year he year. hit fifty two, so three years. Yeah, yeah the the year he hit fifty two, he played one hundred and fifty five games. He had under twelve on two thousand eighteen. Yeah, no, one fifty five, two thousand twelve. He played one twelve. And then one twelve. All right, all right. I stand semi corrected. All right. So he hit twenty seven the last two years. Mm hmm. So I like Aaron Judge. I like Aaron Judge to get to have a big year. In a shortened season, at least. Paul Dizzy, too. You know, in a shortened season, man, that makes sense. He's 27. Yeah, shortened sense. season, I'll take He's 27? It. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is his prime year. How, what, what, how's Trout? I know he's been... 28 been, this year. Yeah, he's never going to hit 50. You knew that right <laughs> off the bat. He was ready for that. I didn't year. have to, I didn't have to prime, wait for that your one. Prime year, your prime years are going to be... Bro, I, I celebrate his birthday, okay? So if, he, if he hits... <laughs> it, when, when he had the... Hold on. Hold on. When he had the, anna- year after, so he, 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 <clears> he had the announcement and he was having a kid, bro, I almost fucking cried. Oh, I felt, I felt like, I time. felt like, I get pregnant at the same time. I <laughs> felt like, I felt like, man, like that's my buddy there. He's gonna have a kid. Like I'm so happy for him. Like Jesus Christ. Stop it. Stop my Stop my girl, it. my girl, my girl was like, are you? My girl was like, are you fucking crying? It's he's having a kid. We had you have three. I'm like, I know, but it's Mike. He deserves it. Dude, they're gonna write a song about you. Eminem's gonna write a song. The tears down, now I wonder why. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> uh, um, yeah, Aaron Judge is prime. Like Yelich as well too. Um, Stanton, man. I mean, if he can get it going, world. man. If he can get it going, he I can still hit that. To get healthy. He's he, ridiculous. He can hit that thing ten million I, years. I, you want some dark horses though? I got some dark horses. Yeah, for give you. me a dark like, horse. I mean, Peter Alonso. Peter Alonso, uh, yeah. I mean, that dude just smashes. You know, he reminds me of freaking of uh, the Hulk. You know, like. A little baseball Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Vladdy Jr., dude. I, last year, you know, everybody he was had so much hype, so that dude always tries to swing for the fences because he comes in with all this hype. Yeah, and he's really worth the hype. But now the hype is gonna go- calm down for him because now he's been in the pros and now he gets to settle in and be a pro. And that dude's legit, man. And on a shortened season, if he gets on one of his roles, he's gonna be he fucking be breaking, yeah. Dude, he is like a baby Bartolo Colon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That dude Just hit it out of a stadium power. off of a tee, man. Off of a tee. Oh, my God. That, that dude could hit a wiffle ball through through a wall. 
it's it's gnarly. <laughs> like father, yeah. like son, man. Yeah, can't count yeah. out Nor- Nolan Arenado. Plays in Colorado. The ball just flies there. You know, that's a dude that's always going to be up there. I know a dude that might have a bounce back year is uh, Chris Davis from Oakland. You know, mm-hmm. he he had hit what forty eight home runs two years in a row. So I mean, he's he's got it. You know, he's definitely got the power for it. Yeah, I don't know. Bryce Harper, I feel like Bryce is due for a bounce back year type of thing too. You yep. know, he's right around Trout's age, aren't they? Like right around the same age. Harper, I think, is just slightly younger. I think he's a year, year, year and a half younger. Not, yeah. not much Be- different. Because Bryce, Bryce came in when he was drafted. Bryce came in almost immediately into the majors, and Trout worked his way up. And right. um, Trout, uh, Bryce Harper had thirty five last season. Right. So how about Chris I'm- Bryant? Chris, no, nah, I think Chris is up. Uh, power years are, are going to be down. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. I think he'll put up 20, yeah. 25 maybe, but I don't think he's going to be in contention to put up big numbers, um, yeah. even, now, with, I, even with a regular season, not not a shortened one. Now, I know you guys are Angels fans, but what about Coley Bellinger? He got a chance too. No, I'm not an Angels fan. <laughs> he's like, wait, he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me put it on the record right now. He's the on freaking Trout. Well, me and me and me and Gil are both Angel fans, die hard. But no, Bellinger's got a swing, man. Bellinger's got some good power. I can't. The problem is Bellinger's got a long swing, though. Like I love Belly and everything, but God, he's just when he, he at the beginning of the year, he 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 committed to shortening up his swing, and all of a sudden he started just raking right. And as the year went on, that dude started getting tired and his swing started getting along, uh, really long again. And then that's part of the problem with him, you know? Like, yeah, if he stays consistent with his short swing approach, he's going to run into a lot of balls because he has that real good extension from his swing. But he, I just, well, maybe a short season will help him, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he's young, man. He's young. It's He's still young. You're right. Sometimes those guys just figure it out, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think of other dudes here. Um, maybe maybe the dude, uh, what's uh, Alvarez from from Houston? He's got a lot of pop. That guy's got a lot of thunder oh, to that too. He, he's got fucking trash cans over there. Fucking that was over before, there. dude. Smart guy. He just came in as a rookie last year. Oh, fastball. Trash cans my were bad. 2017. Oh, my bad. My bad. Again. What they? Oh, they used the buzzers the last year. The year before. <laughs> I'm on drink yeah. number five right now, bro. Actually, right? you I'm know you're right. I think the buzzers were last year. It was last year. I'm finishing up yeah. four. I'm already at number the buzzers five. Were last year. Okay, I'll take that one back. There you go. I'm not that drunk. I'm not yeah. that drunk. Um, cruise, cruise. Yeah, that's another dude I think that has a lot of raw power. You know, he was with the damn Dodgers. Dodgers gave him up. But he wasn't <laughs> playing like that. He started doing better after he left. Hmm. There are sometimes players do better when they leave, man. It yeah. just change of environment change of situation change of coach um it just changes how you hit how you how you feel how you do things man it just it is what it is usually when players come to the southern california area they tend to do a little better because you know the weather and everything else be it as it may it's just a nicer environment to be around but you never know who's gonna react to whatever wherever they go yeah um shifting gears i don't know if you guys heard the ncaa has officially um allowed seniors graduating seniors to have one more year of eligibility um if they want to come back again next year for the spring um, and summer athletes now if they stay with the current school that they're at then it doesn't count against the schools um scholarship numbers and who they give a scholarship to for athletes and stuff like that if they decide to move to a different school then it would count against the that in- incoming school for towards their uh scholarship numbers so they wouldn't be able to get as many as they normally would be able to give away um which unfortunately means that like winter sports athletes like my nephew kobe they their seniors are ass out of luck they already finished their season they were going into the postseason they call it a wash and they walk away from there. Now, the Ivy League, however, has decided not to allow its spring athletes that extra year of eligibility for any of their graduating seniors. Um, as, as of earlier today, 70 plus Ivy League seniors, spring sport athletes, have already hit the transfer portal um, so that they may be eligible to play elsewhere because they want to play their last year. Now, 
do you think it's fair that the Ivy League guys said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to, you know, just you guys, sorry, shit happens. Keep moving. Um, and we got the younger guys coming in and it is what it is. Or do you think it's it's good enough for them to be able to go somewhere else to go play? Um, what do you what do you see as far as the the pros and cons of that kind of situation? I think greater than ninety nine percent of Ivy League student athletes will go pro in something other than sports. Agreed. <laughs> so right. well, look at you get look at Lin Sanity, bro. He made Why it. The Lin so Sanity <laughs> fucking made it, bro. Where did he come out of? Harvard. <laughs> did he really? Yes. yes he, did. he was a Harvard ah, graduate. I didn't know that. Lin Sanity. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick's Harvard. another yeah, one. He's another it. one. Hey, so you got oh, Fitzmagic yeah, and Lin Sanity, bro. Yeah, the yeah, two Chris, best. Uh, Chris Young, the, the pitcher before in the, the baseball. The two best. Out of Yale. The two best catchphrases: Lin Sanity and fucking Fitzmagic. <laughs> coming out of fucking Ivy League. They, they start branding themselves early. <laughs> they know where the money's at. Ain't I mean, them. I agree with, with, with Gil on that one. I think 99.9% .9 of them are going to go off to do way better things in life. Um, I don't know if the joy of hitting a baseball is still there, but or you know shooting hoops, it is what it is, but I'm sure they're going to go on to do other things in, in this world, other major league, quote-unquote, things in in this world. So... I feel bad for him. I really wish that you know this situation isn't the way the situation is. I, I feel bad for Kobe and and the Norwich hockey guys. They were number one. They were seated number one in the nation to go play for D two D three, um, hockey championship this year. They had the best players around. Whatever they were rock and rolling, and then they the shit got cut. It is yeah. what it is, you know. Shit, it sucks. I just feel bad for for the athletes. I mean, if they feel that strongly about, I mean, you got to think about it. how many athletes are in all these colleges and universities. Um, that only about seventy of them, a little over seventy, are the ones that are like, yeah, I'm gonna go play somewhere else now. You yeah. know, <laughs> the other guys are like, yeah, it was cool. All right, man, thanks, appreciate it. Have a night. Have a nice day. <laughs> right. And I, I think the Ivy League is always the curve, right? I, the Ivy League was the first league to shut down sports and to shut down student activities with the COVID-19 thing. And, you know, that, that happened before the NCAA March Madness tournament was canceled. That happened before they had even said they were going to play with no fans. They're, they're usually out ahead of the curve. And I mean, they, they set the curve. So I would be, I don't know. I would, I would be pissed if I, if I was playing sports at an Ivy League school. I was a senior, and I missed either my full season or part of the season. But, you know, I, I think they are putting the correct message out that go out, get paid. You've got a degree from an Ivy League school. Do something in the, you know, either private or government or whatever sector you're going to do that's going to better yourself and better your family versus stick around and, and play ball for another year. This is very true. Yeah. What about at the lower levels with the high school kids where a lot of kids will probably never play ball again at that level again? Baseball, you know? football, uh, well, baseball, track and field. Um, some of those, any, yeah, some Tennis. of these basketball. Swim. Swim. Basketball already happened they, and they got their CIF. In. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, so. but still, all these other all these other seniors that won't be able to finish out their their senior year won't be able to go to CIF, won't be able to go um, and put that last final effort into probably getting a scholarship somewhere. Um, all going right. that's, yeah, that's a borderline, you know, where kids were maybe going to break out this year and have get more looks and stuff like that. Like my school, we're this is the first time we've had a legit baseball program where they had a shot at competing for a CIF title. Last year, we went to the semis with a team full of juniors, um, sophomores, and a couple of freshmen, and only one starting senior, and he didn't even hit. You know, So this year, we're returning all our guys, and two of those kids are in my program that I teach, and I've known them for four years, um, and they were four-year lettermans, and both of them like set school records were first-team all CIF last year. And they're, you know, expect to have big years. One of them was even maybe looking at get, getting drafted. Um, and both of them have college scholarships. Now they have college scholarships that they are good, but not great. So that they were, they were hoping that their senior year would propel them into like a great D1 school or something like that. 
Um, but right now they were just had decent D1 type of school offers and they weren't like pool rides. They had pool rides at the next level at like D2 and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Those are the kids that working with them every day and seeing them that just kills me because that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? And so today CIF came out with, that's it. We had to call the season and this, this season sports is over. And I, I kind of don't understand with high school, why can't it just be pushed into the summer? Baseball was meant to be played in the summer anyhow. Yeah. You know, and I bet you these coaches, I know I would, and I'm not coaching baseball this year, but I've coached the past two years. I would gladly give up my July, um, even June to coach these kids in those months so that they got a, a league and a CIF, a shot at CIF. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm pretty sure all the coaches that are worth the damn would do that in a heartbeat for these kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's that's heartbreaking at the high school level, man. Because yeah. that, re- Go ahead. that may be your last chance. Not only that may be your last chance to play a game that you love with people that you love, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody... Right. That's good. That's the last or wrong. Everybody splits up their own ways. You may play in a semi-pro league or a wood bat league. Like Brent and I played in a couple leagues together mm-hmm. outside of outside of school, right? and it was fun. But man, that's that's the last time you're with those people playing a sport that you love, and you know then you take that to the level to the next level where you may have the opportunity to better yourself because of your play, whether it's a full ride, a half ride or just getting into a university period. And so many people develop between that junior and senior year. Like you may have looks your junior year, but nobody comes and checks you out until you're a man. And that's your last year of school. That's when you're, you know, 17 and a half, 18 years old, and you're playing at the level where they can appropriately assess you. So that's what's so tough is the scouts that I'm sure came and checked these guys out they weren't checking them out for, you know, the, the professional prospect because those guys are thinking, hey, I'll, I'll come back next year and take a second look once these guys are a little bit more mature. And, you know, that's that's absolutely heartbreaking. But I think the one benefit is there are so many baseball scouts that are crawling over D1, D2, D1AA universities as well as high schools that – they will probably get their shot, but man, they're they're probably going to lose some of the financial side of having a full ride or a half scholarship to a school where they're going to get more exposure. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You, you just yeah nailed on yeah, the head. Man. Me. And then I was talking about in terms of the graduating well too. Um, a lot of times this is the one thing that these kids will graduate from. Like a lot of these kids, maybe half of these kids will not graduate from anything ever again. Like you know, most of them don't go to college. Those that do go to college, a lot of them don't finish. You know, this, this is going to be the last time that they really have something to celebrate that big. You know, that's achievable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's, that's tough. That sounds very sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's heartbreaking, man. It really, it, it really is, though. I mean, it, 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 uh, spend it however you want and, and the, uh, the, the ability to maybe something else, you know, comes up later on when you're in, you know, that D2 school that, that lower D one school, whatever it might be, um, like you still get those opportunities. They're fewer and far between. Maybe you didn't have that breakout season that you were supposed to have. You know, what if you were counting on that breakout season to propel you into something, and and all of a sudden now you don't have that, and so it's kind of rough. I feel bad for these kids that aren't able to to go out there and play that last season with their buddies, with their family, with who they basically been playing probably. Most of these guys have probably been playing with the same dudes for, you know, years. Forget just high school, but they've probably been playing, you know, right. Little League ball with them. And for it to end that way, man, it just – it's it's heartbreaking. Being as a, a former just standard athlete, I, don't wanna, I wasn't stellar at pretty much anything, but I was good enough to go out there and play. Um, it would be heartbreaking to me to be able, not be able to, to go out there and play one more time with, with uh, my boys – you know, that senior year and, and watch it right out. But I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking that my, my heart goes out to all those guys, especially the, the guys you have already, um, that were looking like they were going to, you know, break out and go wild and shit, you know? So, um, yeah, it would, yeah. it would be super cool if they did like some type of summer program, even if it was like an all league thing, right? Like 
Sierra League versus whatever league versus whatever league, and it was just the top 25 kids of the five schools that are in the league, just to do a 10 or 20 game tournament. Like, I can't believe that it just got shut down and like they're not giving the kids the opportunity to at least have one more look. Yeah. Right. I yeah, agree, man. I mean, Artie, I mean, I don't know what kind of position you're in to be able to bring something up the fucking flagpole, but, I mean, that sounds fucking 10, 15 games, man. Well, you can knock that out in a month. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what, I think is, what I think is cool is, is you just kind of uh, gave me a little idea of why not create a, a league of seniors that play other leagues in the yeah. area. It's not probably going to be anything official, but it gives them maybe a little closure, you know? Yeah. I and, mean... And most, most, most leagues are going to have enough seniors in a, on a team that there will be able to create at least one team. You know, yeah, this that, year, that's exactly what I was thinking was, you know, whatever league you're in, you probably have 25 guys yeah. that are seniors that you could put together a team to play sure. the next league that's in the county. Yeah, I agree. Even if it is just a tournament, you know, maybe, right. maybe it's just, maybe it's just a tournament, a 20 game tournament, 15 game tournament, but. All right. Yeah, I might throw that out there to our head coach over at Summit. See, see what he has to say about that, and and he, they could do that because the seniors are already done, so they're not losing any eligibility or anything like that. Right. I mean, throw so. it out there, see what sticks, and and let us know, Artie. Let us know what happened. I mean, hey man, you got a fan right here. I'll go out there and I'll go watch some of these games, man. Fuck, dude. <laughs> so anything yeah. to support these kids, man. Let, let them get their shot. Let them get let them get that one more look. You know what I mean? Uh, who yeah. knows? This might start something across the nation that l- allows you know, all over the place, people to be doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Get these kids that one more game. Get those kids this one more quick season or quick tournament to be able to go out there and play one last time. Right, right. Totally agree. Um, totally agree. All right, shift gears into the NFL. Shifting into the NFL. Rex Ryan calls Amari Cooper a turd during an interview. Says he would not have paid him what he got from the Cowboys. Later retracted his statement, though, saying that that was a poor choice of words on his part. He still feels the same, though. But looking back, he would have used a different terminology when discussing the wide receiver. And right. he does it's have his daddy. It's because his daddy coached the Eagles. <laughs> right? It is true. Yeah. But the same point, same time. He did make some valid points. Why are they paying to mess around with worrying about Amari Cooper instead of worrying about the guy that throws it to him? Absolutely. You know, Amari, yeah, maybe he doesn't show up to big games. Uh, I was looking at some of his stats, and, I mean, who's a lockdown defender anymore with with um, with the way the NFL rules really are? And with that being said, Amari should probably have a few more breakout games. He only had four 100-yard uh, games last year. Do you know that? Yes. I didn't realize that. And then he decided not to play or whatever. I don't know what the hell happened against the Patriots, but he just was a, a no play on that game. He had no, he was no factor in, during that game. Oh, he, he actually played in it. He just wasn't a factor. Yeah. He he was oh, basically wow. shut down the entire game. Okay. I didn't know. I, I was wondering if he was hurt. And it was a legit question. Me being a smart ass knowing you're a Cowboy fan. Like, <laughs> Did that guy get hurt or something for that game? Like, I didn't know. Yeah, I see, thought you were trying so- to be a smart ass. That's all it was. No, I was, I just saw the stats and I'm like, Did hurt for a game because was it the year before he was having hamstring issues the year or? before yeah but this this okay. last year no yeah all right it was yeah. hamstring Come issues on. last year and, and ankle issues with the raiders oh okay yeah and i think he's just trying to get a top five receiver in the league though oh, no, no, so? no he's not no 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 top 10 yes top top 10 yes he's like number seven okay. he's a top yeah. 10 on a fantasy what? team on one fantasy team <laughs> Look, hold on. They hold on. I I just remembered why Gil is so salty about fucking Amari Cooper. It's because Gilbert's a fucking Raider fan, uh, and Amari. <laughs> that's why he's like, fuck that guy. I don't give a shit about him. Don't give him shit. <laughs> Damn right. Say it twice. Anything that I understand, it's disappointment. All right. <laughs> Man, so you're you're an Angels fan and a Raiders fan? You got a real oh, oh, oh. brutal. Man, don't tell me right. you like the Clippers too. No, I'm a I'm a Laker fan. Oh. All right. He almost said uh, Bruin fan. Right I don't know something I something. Was, he did something right. Um, uh, it's gotta have one team that wins. <laughs> uh, but I think I think you know what he does. Like I already said, he does make some valid points. 
Um, he does disappear sometimes during games. He, you know, he loses. He, he's a quiet guy. He's he's good, strong, quiet dude. But he's quiet because he knows that somebody can call him out, just like we just did, and like Rick Ryan just did. Like, hey man, sometimes you don't show up for a game, and you're supposed to be there all 16 now 17 games. You're supposed to be playing your heart out the entire time. You're the number one guy. Go out there and be the number one guy every single week, every single snap, every no matter what's going on, whether you get the ball or not. Go be that guy. Don't be that guy, but be the number one. What I don't like about it is they, they pay Rex Ryan to to use his coach speak and be an analyst. And when he analyzes and he use like he was back when he was coaching, now they want to they they say he needs to retract the statement because the words are too harsh. He's a former coach. There's right. a Ryan. That's this is what they use on the field. It is a kind of thing. Now, I get it. You can't use that all the time, but he called him a turd. I mean, come on, guys. They, there's, <laughs> there's plenty of things more worse yeah. than they that they probably could have yeah. called them, yes. but turd, any, like, any, come any, on. Ra- do you think any racism came into play type of thing? Is that why they're worried No, about? I think they're just, no. they, they just don't want somebody talking down to somebody like that. Who knows? Yeah. They, maybe they're worried about some racism stuff. I mean, but. Somebody like who, huh? No, they're always worried about that. That's what they always yeah. worry about. But I don't think Rex Ryan meant it in any form or fashion. That yeah, I don't think in that – it, 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 there was never no – no. Um, he just couldn't find a more expressive word at the moment. That's all. Without breaking the beep out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he can, yeah Turd, I think, is it should be okay with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Has Amari said anything yet? I'm kind no, of curious. No, he didn't say shit. Mm. He didn't care, dude. He, he, he doesn't care. Yeah. Um, the draft is starting ter- turds day, April 23rd. <laughs> oh man, I, I cannot wait for the draft. I'm uh, a draft geek, man. It will I be, love it. it will be interesting how they do this with how large of a party the draft has become over the years. It's basically a party and a, and a, and a, and a fucking crazy weekend. It's not as what it was or whatever. The draft is only a sporting event. Um, it's the only one left on the book still right now. If you don't count WrestleMania, that's going to happen this weekend coming up, um, to an empty... Oh, to an oh, empty UFC, crowd. You know? UFC stopped. UFC's done. They're not going to do it anymore. Oh, okay. My the last thing I heard, UFC is not going to do any more uh, mat or, or <laughs> UFCs for the foreseeable future. Um, okay, well, there's still Japan baseball. There's still Japan in baseball. There's still Japan baseball. Oh, Japan know? baseball. I thought you threw an in there. I'm like, well, bro, you had too many drinks already. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking them, and you're getting the effects. Um, do you think the league is going to get any blowback from people for having the event? Um, do you really think anybody really needs to see players shake Roger Goodell's hands and holding a jersey on stage? Uh, do you think that even matters? Um, they're talking about going to either doing like a Skype over Skype call kind of thing that you, they're going to broadcast out or doing um, – what's that new – the new one that everybody's using right now? Zoom. Zoom. They're saying it might be on Skype or Zoom. Um and do the oh, the entire thing. Boom, boom. Just shake your rump. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, are you guys? I mean, I'm kind of excited just because it's something. Uh, sports, live things happening. I don't know how I to. I cannot wait for the draft. What? I, I think it. something's uh, gonna happen where it does not happen. <laughs> you think so? I don't know, man. So so much of the draft is calling somebody on the phone and looking at their tape. Outside of shaking the hand and being in a war room like i don't know man i'm pumped but can you imagine the numbers right like can you imagine the numbers for this draft too oh it's There's gonna no the, the rating the ratings the are gonna go through up. the roof the one thing that's gonna go through the oh, roof it's gonna be crazy everybody's gonna stop and watch, watch this fucking crazy. thing yeah i just don't think there's gonna be of the in-person stuff like you know getting together it's gonna be a lot of virtual thing i i just don't yeah, i think it has to be I yeah. mean, it's it's gonna Probably be it's gonna to be, be like it used to be, where you know you had one dude and one guy on the podium, and they were getting calls from the teams, going, "All right, with the number thirty eighth pick in the draft, the Houston Texans take blah blah blah, and you know blah blah blah," and it was like, "Okay, pause. All right, then the fucking Atlanta Falcons are now on the clock. You have six minutes." And then it was just fucking silence. I watched these fucking clips of the draft back in the seventies. And it was just kind of like, okay, who's next? What, what, are yeah. we do, what are we doing now? We're just we're just sitting yeah. here waiting. All right, cool. No, oh, we got the call. I mean, the you calls. Think in. about the drafts. The drafts that have gone on too. Like ninety percent of that is it's Mel Kiper and Todd McShay with Steve Young and like two other former players 
that are up there reviewing film from somebody else. Like you can do that remotely, you know? Absolutely. Right. I, man, I, I am stoked because that's going to be the first thing that's going to give everybody a little bit of hope. No right. matter who your team is, whoever you draft, you're like, I love that guy. Right? Uh-huh. You, you don't know if they could play for, for a year, but I love him draft day, right now. I yeah, love him. Draft day, man, I you know, it'd be cool to take it to the next Tom level. Charlton and all these different dudes that never, that never made it, you know, but on draft day, man, you're stoked about who your team. Picks. Why, why you got to bring up fucking taco Charlton, bro? Of all the because fucking people, you son of post. a bitch. <laughs> you were saying, Artie? Uh, you know what I think would take this to the next level if they, if they did it? Is uh, do like a hologram type of thing with the NFL draft. Like where it's Godell is live, but the guys are like on holograms or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Bro, that's but a... it'd, be easy, it'd be easier probably to have, what, Godell? Who'd be easier to do, whether it's Godell or each guy? I think it'd be. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a lot of technology you got to use. Still, to, I mean, at least the top ten guys, maybe you know, top ten, the bonus babies, you know. It's gonna be rough, right. dude. That'd that, be freaking know. insane. Imagine if like they oh, did something like absolutely. that, absolutely. And they, they shook hands like virtually or something, like you know, through holograms. That'd be, that'd be crazy. It, it would be crazy. But has money. But here's they the thing. Money. But here's the thing. To do that, you would have to know the first ten guys that are going off the board. For you know, sure, for for a pretty good idea of who the first ten, and that's are the problem. Be. We have a pretty good idea. The problem would have to be like, okay, you call the number one guy and go, okay, guys, who are you guys? Browns, who are you guys taking? Okay, we need to know because we're gonna set this thing up ahead of time. All right, cool, you're taking them. Okay, now I'm gonna call who's after them. I don't know, fucking the Dolphins. Dolphins. All right, so the Browns are taking this guy. Who are you guys taking now? And they'd have to get the first ten guys. And they'd have to stick to it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, or extended the top 20 guys and get holograms of 20 guys and say, hey, if you're a top 10 pick, then we're going to do a hologram thing with you. It's going to be, I think it's logistic. I think it's a logistical nightmare having to put that together in the spur of the moment. Yes, you might have the holograms ready to go or whatever, but well, who says somebody doesn't grab the number 22 guy? On the board. You know what I mean? And, and, and draft and, them in the top 10? And, no, well, I'm saying, you know, okay, 10. Because I said top 10. Like, do it only for the top 10 guys, but go go 20 deep. I don't know, dude. Things happen. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going um, to call Roger and to see what he thinks. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a, a live draft party and, and see that first round. And, and uh, we'll give our take on, on people we don't know. And we're just like, yeah, man, that's the best guy they could have picked. And, and Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> we got another taco, Charlton. Um, only taco I know of is the guy with uh, in Boston right now. What's his name? Taco, taco something. The big tall guy. Oh, it's huge. Taco Fall. Taco Fall. There you go. I wanted to say Taco Ball, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's again. All you're talking about is balls, man. God damn it. We started and ended always with comes, balls. Always comes back to balls. Oh, fuck it, eh? Anything else, you guys? I think that we're, we're at the we're at the end of our rope here at about an hour and a half. So, um, anything else you guys want to drop in? Uh, no. Uh, I'm, ex- I'm excited. Who's uh, where? Where the Cowboys have their pick at? Seventeenth, uh, I believe. Seventeenth. All right. I could be wrong, but I believe it's seventeen, unless they trade up. But I doubt they will. Over under. Who do you uh, want them to get? I haven't even looked at it yet. I have to really. I mean, because at 17, I mean, I hope they go and get uh, another cornerback or a safety. Um, we do have to address the um, center. center that has now left us. Um, so I would have to get from Notre Dame, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he isn't already off the board, but yeah, um, I'll take him. But it's it's one of those things. Where I have to do a little more, like, I don't look until, like, a couple days before. That's probably the reason why I haven't won a damn fantasy football championship. Because I don't pay attention until a couple days before, if not the day before. And even then, shit happens. But, (laughs) I digress. Um, So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it'd be interesting to watch the the first round, at least, um, and commentate and and, and, kind of go that route. I don't know, we'll see. I'll talk to Artie and see what... He wants to do for that one. Uh, maybe get one of you guys on here again. We'll talk shit and, and do stuff like that. Yeah. I like it. My team needs a my team needs an offensive lineman. We gotta protect Tom Brady. So 
as long as they give me an offensive lineman or at least somebody that can get to the quarterback a little bit better, I'm happy with that. So we picking at 14, so I, we, there's going to be a lot of defensive linemen in this draft, so we'll be all right. Man. What the shit was that, Artie? <laughs> you put that shit on mute, bro. Don't ever be that guy. Don't ever be that guy again. I'm, I'm not even going to cut that one out. I'm going to let people hear you just fucked up. <laughs> um but as far as that then guys all right that was you know our sixth fucking show yay we're done with the sixth yeah. one now i got to go that do was some... fun. it was that was fun, that was fun. hopefully you guys you know come back and and you know i only got a bag arrow like five more times before he shows up again uh, gentlemen I'm, I, after this show i'm getting off to make rice crispy treats i'm cool I, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love rice right, crispy treats. Yeah, no, you, you better bring me one tomorrow to work. I'm not. You might not see me tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. All right. Uh, but it was a good show, guys. I thank you guys. For yeah, that was all awesome. I, I appreciate Thanks, you guys. Man, I appreciate it, Artie. Thank you, Gil. Yeah, we'll really. have you guys on here again. Um, yeah. We'll fucking rock and roll it, and 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 do things and stuff. Um, everybody, say good night. All right. All right. Good night. See you guys later, good man. Night. Have fun. Tell Trout I say hi, bro. Oh, I will. When I'm down there playing the balls, I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> you guys, be First safe. Be, everybody. Guys be safe out there. Everybody who was listening or who happens to glance at it, you gentlemen on the show, you guys, please be safe. Wash your hands. Take your hands out of your face. All that kind of stuff. Wash mm-hmm. your ass, too. It, it helps. Wash your ass, too. Deodorant helps, too. <laughs> <laughs> everybody have a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful night. I do appreciate everybody being here. I love you guys all. We'll do it again soon. All right. Be safe. Catch Good you guys night, later. guys. Thank you. Wash your hands. All right, guys, that's the end of the show today. Don't forget, to, if you guys want to add uh, some commentary to us, hit us up at the Blown Save Pod- Podcast at gmail.com. We're going to have some merch coming out soon enough. Uh, thanks again to Errol and Gil and the, the Masas, Basas, Casas, the Basas himself, Mr. Artie Casas. I am your other co-host, Mr. Brent, the Brentest Brent ever. You guys have a great night, guys. We love you. Have a good one.